Welcome to Connect. It is really good to be in person with all of you. It has been quite a bit since we've done one of these live. Um, it is, it's, it's really fun to be in person. So we have a lot of exciting stuff that we're going to talk about today. We have, uh, we have Quest 3 and, um, and some other new hardware that I'm excited to show you. Uh, and we have a whole lot of new AI experiences. So we've been in the lab for a while, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to showing you what we've been building. Uh, but first, I, want, I just want to take a moment to, to talk about why we're here. Uh, at Meta, we are focused on building the future of human connection. And what that means is that we build products to help people feel closer. Like we're right there, present with each other, with our friends and family and colleagues and the people we care about, no matter where in the world you know, we actually are. And we do this because we believe that that makes us, that that strengthens our relationships. It helps us have more fun together. It improves how we learn. It gives us more opportunities that help span distance. Now, the, the physical world around us um, is amazing, right? I think that one of life's great joys is getting to go out and be active and explore. And at the same time, uh, over the last you know, few decades, our industry has been you know, building up this increasingly vibrant digital world alongside it with all the apps and digital content that we've been creating. And you know, I always find it funny when people say that, that, you know, that the, the digital world and all the apps and stuff isn't the real world, because I think increasingly, you know, in our modern time, the real world is really this combination of the, the physical world that we inhabit and, and this digital world that we're building. But, you know, even though we, we constantly are touching the digital world, it's mostly through screens, and it, it's almost like it inhabits a completely different plane from our, our physical lives. And I think that one of the most interesting questions for our industry over the coming decades is going to be, how do we unify these experiences of the physical that we have with this vibrant digital world to create something that is more coherent and just better than anything that we have today? Now, in, in the future, I think not too far from now, you're going to walk into a room, and there are going to be you know, as many holograms of digital things for you to interact with as there are physical objects. I mean, think about all the, the things that are physically there that don't actually need to be physical things. Right? All the paper, the, you know, the media, the games, the art, your workstation, any screen, can all be interactive holograms. You know, think about going and, and hanging out with your friends. Um, you know, pretty soon, I, I think you're, we're going to be at a point where you're going to be there physically with some of your friends, and others will be there digitally as you know, avatars, as holograms, and they'll feel just as present as everyone else. Or, you know, you'll walk into a meeting and you'll sit down at a table and, you know, you'll be there with your, you know, there will be people who are there physically and people who are there digitally as holograms, but also sitting around the table with you are going to be a bunch of AIs who are embodied as holograms who are helping you get different stuff done too. So, I mean, this is just a quick glimpse of the future and how these ideas of the physical and digital come together into this idea that we call the metaverse. And a lot of the foundational technologies to enable this are the things that we are going to talk about today. Mixed reality allows you to bring digital objects into the physical world. Advances in AI allow us to create different AIs and personas that can help us accomplish different things. And smart glasses are going to eventually allow us to bring all of this together into a stylish form factor that we can wear all day long. Now, a big part of this innovation is about making sure that these technologies are accessible to everyone. Right? Sometimes we innovate by releasing something that has never been seen before. We do that a lot. But sometimes we innovate by taking something that is awesome but is super expensive and making it so that it can be affordable for everyone, or even free. And innovation to bring the future to millions or eventually billions of people is a big part of what we do, and I think that that's really important too. All right, so with that all said, let's jump right in. Woo! 
First, we are incredibly proud to introduce Quest 3, the first mainstream mixed reality headset. <laughs> Quest 3 is it's the most powerful headset that we have ever shipped, and it allows you to blend the physical and digital worlds together. You can navigate it with our, just your hands if you want, and the hand tracking is getting really good. Um, or with these brand new precision controllers that we've designed for games or work or things that you, where you want some extra precision. And, you know, of course, it's completely standalone. No wires, no battery pack, you know, nothing like that that's going to break your, your sense of presence. So w when you put on Quest 3, uh, you see the physical room around you. Only now it is a canvas that you can bring your digital objects into the world. You know, Quest 3, it, it, it understands your space so you can play with the world around you. You can solve Lego puzzles or you can build your own creations on any flat surface in your room. You can play games like BAM with your friends sitting around a table, whether you're physically right there together or even if they're far away. You know, people love working out in Quest. But now, if you're doing a body combat workout, the targets are going to come at you in your physical room, whether you're in your living room or if you're, you're, uh, you're in your home gym, you're be able to look around and see the room around you, so you're going to be a lot more comfortable you know, swinging your arms and moving your body. The limits of your physical space are going to be able to expand. So you're going to be able to be a part of much larger worlds. You know, there's one point in the Stranger Things game where you can be sitting in your living room or anywhere else and portals to the upside down open right there. Now these experiences are possible because Quest 3 shows your physical space with 10 times more pixels than what we had on Quest 2. And it automatically maps the space that you're in using two dedicated color camera sensors and a depth sensor, which makes it so that if you, you know, pick up a digital ball and throw it at the physical wall, it'll bounce off it. Or if someone's shooting at you and you want to duck the fire, you can just get behind your physical couch. Now, this also means that you're going to be able to take a big virtual screen and just drop it wherever you are, and it'll show up in your physical room. And, and this is going to unlock a lot of awesome experiences for hanging out with people, watching content, and even if they're not there with you. Now, one thing that I'm, I'm pretty excited to share today is that X, uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming is coming to Quest in December. So you're going to be able to play you know, hundreds of Xbox games, including titles like Halo and Minecraft and Elder Scrolls. And you're going to be able to do that on a massive screen anywhere you go. Now, we're just scratching the surface of, of what's going to be possible when you can drop virtual objects into your physical space. And next year, uh, we're launching something that we call Augments, which are basically persistent, spatially anchored digital objects that you can interact with. So you, know, you can put a frame on your wall with photos and videos from Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can put a digital portal next to your physical workout gear, so every time you walk by it, you can easily jump into a supernatural workout. So there's a lot to do here. All right, and with mixed reality on Quest 3, um, the transition is, is seamless. So if you're in an immersive experience, you can always just double tap on your headset to get back to your physical environment. And you'll see the immersive world that you're in just melts away. You're back in your physical space. All right, I'm really excited to see what all of you do with this. I'm really excited to get this in your hands. This is going to be a big a game changer and a, a big capacity improvement for, for these headsets. Now, on top of this, we also have the world's best library of fully immersive content. And there are a bunch of new titles that are coming, and they take advantage of all of the new power that is in this Quest 3 headset. Because this is the first headset that is shipping with the next generation uh, Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 
Qualcomm processor. It's got twice the graphics performance of anything we've shipped before. And we designed new pancake lenses and paired them with new displays. So the graphics performance is, is really stunning. So let's take a look at Ad Asgard's Wrath 2. For the original, you needed a full gaming PC and a headset that was wired to it um, in order to get it to work. And the sequel runs natively on Quest 3, and it looks awesome. Assassin's Creed Nexus, <laughs> finally here, <laughs> finally here. Worth waiting for. I, I know a lot of us have been waiting for this. Um, it just, it looks stunning, it looks stunning. And there were a bunch of other major developers who are bringing great titles out of the open app lab uh, that, that we have, like Roblox, which is launching today. I'm really excited for this one after taking the time to optimize it for VR. It's going to be a big deal. There's also a, a major live sports season coming up with X Stadium. Uh, so, you know, we got fully immersive NBA games for free on us. You know, you can literally sit courtside from your couch. Um, if you're into fighting like me, um, you can watch LFA or Cage Warriors from UFC Fight Pass in 180 degree 4K resolution. Um, pretty much the next best thing to actually being in the octagon. <laughs> well, that's pretty awesome too. Um, <laughs> we've got a lot of awesome new Horizon content coming. Love it. Shout out to Super Rumble and Citadel, which have gone to the top of the, the charts of popular Horizon destinations. Um, you know, as you can see, the, the visuals continue making big steps up. And, and these are just some of the most, most fun social games that are out there. Um, in addition to all this, there are also a bunch of tools for businesses that are coming to. You know, millions of people uh, have, have used you know, one of the hundreds of productivity and work apps. Uh, on Quest. And next month, we are launching MetaQuest for Business, which is going to allow you to take mixed reality and bring it to your organization at scale. So, you know, this is going to be compatible with Microsoft Intune, VMware Workspace ONE, Avanti UEM. Um, and we got Microsoft 365 also coming to Quest by the end of this year. So you're going to be able to use, you know, the productivity apps where you can get stuff done, Word. Excel. Overall, all right, so that's a bunch of the content that's coming. There's more coming as well, but that's what I have to talk about today. I'm really excited about Quest 3. It is the most powerful headset yet with the next generation processor, better displays and optics. It's 40% thinner, a lot more comfortable, and it comes with the great new precision controllers or the awesome hand tracking that has just gotten a lot better. You know, end to end, we have designed this thing and optimized it the hardware stack, the software stack, so it can deliver amazing mixed reality and the world's best immersive content library. So there it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Quest 3, it is shipping on August 10th. You can order it today for $499. Now, you know, I mean, when I just think about this stuff, I mean, looking back, I, I just think it's, it's kind of wild that, you know, five years ago, the state of the art was you needed a big gaming PC and a headset that was wired to, and you need to set up all these sensors in order to be able to do some of the stuff. And now, you know, we're sitting here, and you can do all of this with even better resolution, plus mixed reality, take it anywhere you want for, for just $499. Um, you know, our goal is to continue to lead in developing the state of the art on this and also to continue leading on bringing the best devices to everyone. And I'm really proud of the progress that the team has made here. So congrats, guys. All right. Now, um, you know, there's no real way to do this transition. So let's completely change gears um, and just go in a, in a, in a completely different direction. Um, let's talk about AI. So this has been an amazing year for AI. At, at Meta alone, we have launched AI 
models that can generate 3D video from text prompts, um, that can create sound from images, um, that can bring objects into VR just by looking at them, uh, that can let you speak a different language in your own voice, um, and of course, uh, a leading open source foundation model, Llama 2, all in the last 12 months. But you know, this is, this is really just the beginning. Because if, if you look across the industry and if you look at what everyone is doing, um, you know, most people haven't yet had the chance to experience these LLMs or any of these AI advances yet. And you know, that's a thing that I think that we can help change. So today, I want to talk about some of the work that we've been doing to, to bring the state of the art AI into the apps that billions of people use. So uh, we set a standard for open source language models with Llama 2. But before today, you know, we haven't talked that much about our image generation models. And you know, our team has been you know, quietly working on these and cranking on them, and they've gotten really good. Um, so you know, we call it EMU for Expressive Media Universe, continuing with our animal theme. Um, and just take a look at these images. Because today we're starting to roll out a bunch of products with, with this in it. And it's, uh, you know, it's they're high quality, photorealistic. But you know, one of the coolest things is that Emu generates them fast. All right, so it's not a minute. These are, it's about five seconds to generate one of these. Which, which just makes it really fun to play with, because you can just iterate. And you know, my kids tell me it's still not fast enough. But, we're, we're, you know, it's, but five seconds kind of gets to the point where you're, you're really cooking. All right, so we built this into chats, and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about stickers. Because every day, people send hundreds of millions of stickers to express things um, in chats. And you know, every chat is a little bit different, and you want to express you know, subtly different emotions. But you know, today, we only have you know, a fixed number. But you know, with Emu, uh, now you have the ability to just Type in what you want. You'll generate a set of custom, never before seen stickers on the fly. Um, and you can send them to your friends. Um, we've actually we've been testing this for a little bit. And, um, and, and people do seem to really like this. And today we're rolling it out very broadly across our, our different apps. Um, in addition to stickers, we're also bringing AI editing tools to Instagram um, next month. So, you know, it, it, the team dug out this photo of me, you know, that turned me into a cowboy, ugly sweater party. I don't really get that one. <laughs> that one's good. That, in an alternate world, you know, I, that could have been me. Um, or, or here's my crazy dog, Beast. Um, you can, let's turn him into origami. Poor Beast. <laughs> Straighten his hair. Uh, cross stitch. All right, there you go. Um, I think this is going to be really fun. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to getting this into all of our apps. Coming to Instagram um, in about a month. Pretty excited about this. All right, so let's move on from images for a second. You know, at, at Meta, one of the views that we have on the development of AI that is a little bit different from the rest of the industry is. You know, we don't think that there's going to be like one singular super intelligence that everyone interacts with. But our view is that you know, people are going to want to interact with a bunch of different AIs for the different things that you want to do. And I actually think that over time, a lot of you are going to want to make your own AIs to advance individual goals that you have, whether you're a small business and you want to interact with customers, or if you're a creator and you want to engage your community, or whatever it is that you do. So we are building a platform for creating AIs that can help you get things done or just have fun. Um, and you know, the way this is going to work is there, people are going to be able to interact with these AIs across the whole meta universe of products. So you know, of course, you'll be able to chat with them in WhatsApp and Messenger and Instagram Direct. But beyond that, they're going to have profiles in Instagram and Facebook. And you'll be able to interact with them. And eventually, they're going to be embodied as avatars and live and be able to interact with them in the metaverse, too. And 
we're going to open this platform up for developers and more use cases soon. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what all of you build. But even before that, um, we have been creating a bunch of AIs ourselves, and we're going to start rolling these out in beta um, today and, and ramping that a bit over the next couple of days. Um, so let's meet some of them. All right, first up, we got Meta AI. Meta AI is it's your, your basic assistant, right? That you can that you can talk to like a person, right? You can you can message Meta AI and any of the messaging apps, WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, Direct. Um, soon you're going to be able to message it in Quest Three, and it's going to help you, you know, answer you know your basic questions or requests. It um it is based on um, it's 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 built with a model that's based on Llama Two, but in addition. Um, it also has access to real-time information and broader knowledge through a partnership that we've done with Microsoft and Bing Search. So here you can see it. You ask a question, it has access to real-time information. It can point you towards that. It can point you towards search results. Our new image generation model, Emu, is also built directly into Meta AI. So you can just message it and tag anything with Imagine, and it will generate high-quality, photorealistic images right there in the chat in seconds for free. So pretty excited about that. And um, another neat feature of this is that you can invoke Meta AI in any chat. So it doesn't just have to be Meta AI's, you know, your thread with them. You can, you can do it in group chats, right? You just start your message with Meta AI, and it's going to respond. And um, we've been testing this internally, and it is really fun to just generate fun messages, uh, uh, photos, or you know, settle debates really quickly, or just, just you know, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. But it's, um, it's, it's, it's super convenient. All right, so I think Meta AI, it's our, it's our basic assistant. It's going to be, I think it's going to be really useful. Um, we're going to focus over the coming months and years on building this out into a deeper and deeper um, personal assistant with more integrations across everything we do. Um, and I think this is going to be a big deal. But in addition to this, we have also been experimenting with creating some AIs that are um, a bit more fun, or that have some more personality, um, opinions, interests, um, just a, a little more interactive and fun to, to play with. So um, let's check this out. So let's say you're, you're planning dinner. Um, you got Max, the sous chef, um, who can help you come up with a recipe and uh, help you come up with ideas. You know, so if you want to find a way to sneak some broccoli into your kid's dinner, Max has got you. you know, let's say you add too much salt to the recipe, you can help you balance it out. All right? Or let's say you know, you're writing something like a, a keynote and you're not really sure where to get started. You can ask Lily um, or personal editor AI who can help you brainstorm and share tips. Or you can give her a bunch of the text that you've, that you've written and she can help you edit it and make it better. Or maybe you're traveling and you're trying to plan a road trip with your kids. Um, you've got Lorena, who's going to be able to help you find the best barbecue uh, on the road trip or find a good national park or a beautiful spot to, to take the kids. So um, there you go. That's a few of them. These are just a few of the AIs that we've, that we've trained so far. Um, there are a lot more that are coming. And they're going to spend all kinds of different interests from you know, gaming, to fashion, to philosophy, to just all kinds of fun stuff. But the important thing here is that this isn't just going to be about answering queries. Right? This is about entertainment and, um, and about helping you do things to connect with the people around you and helping you accomplish the things that you want across whatever your different goals are. And because we thought that you know, this should feel fun and it should feel familiar, so we did something a little bit different for us. And um, we partnered with a bunch of pretty awesome people to basically embody these and, and play them. So uh, let's say you want to get in shape. Well, this is Victor, played by Dwayne Wade. And, um, and he's going to pull together a workout plan for you and get you motivated. And you know, the good thing about Victor is he is there any time that you want to get a workout in. So you don't have to schedule a session or something like that. Um, and he is always going to be encouraging you to hit your goals. All right. Let's say you're trying to pull together Halloween costumes for your family. 
Well, you got Dylan, played by Lore DIY, um, who's got you covered on craft. So, you know, my, my daughter really wanted me to be Dumbledore and kind of struggling with the beard thing. So you got Dylan, and she helped me work this out. But then I got this other problem, which is my other daughter doesn't want to go with the Harry Potter theme. She just wants to be an apple. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, how do, I, how do I fit this into the theme? And I think that's actually a pretty good idea. So, all right, so anyhow, so that's Dylan. Okay, or let's say... Uh, you want to do something a little bit wilder. Let's say you want to play a role-playing game. Well, now you can just drop the, the dungeon master into one of your chats. And uh, let's check this guy out. Let's get medieval, player. <laughs> I mean, who hasn't wanted to play a text, you know, adventure game with Snoop Dogg? Oh, man. <laughs> so, it's good. The expressions are good. We've got voice coming over the couple of months, probably, probably early next year or something like that. Um, but this is, this is pretty fun to play with. Um, you know, at, at this point in the keynote, I, I, I was kind of thinking, you know, we could do an audible. You want a live demo? Yeah! All right. Can't promise much, but let's try it. Let's try it and see what happens. All right. So let's see. Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Which one? Hmm. What do we do? Forge ahead. Forge ahead. Let's forge ahead. Gather your weapons and armor. Well, I think we know what to do. Let's, uh, let's get on a horse. All right, we return to the keynote at this point. All right. Um, <laughs> All right. The, the demo gods have smiled upon us. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, so that's just a handful of, of, some, of the, some of the AIs that we're building. And, um, and there are a lot more to discover. So um, we put together this, this quick video just featuring some of the people we were working on this project with. I think this is pretty fun. We built some AIs you can interact with and then partnered with awesome people to play some of them to make them even more fun. Introducing Meta's AIs with Tom Brady as Brew, ready to throw you his deep knowledge of sports. Seriously? How could you not know that? Naomi Osaka as Tamika, proving it's cool to geek out. Time for a selfie. Chris Paul is Perry. He's preaching the gospel of golf. Drive for show, hunt for dope. Paris Hilton is Amber. She's taking a stylish bite out of crime. Not to brag, but I am a forensic expert. Mr. Beast is Zach. This dude's funny, like funny, funny. I'm not saying I know everything. <laughs> um. Israel Adesanya as Louise. He'll make sure you never tap out. The more you know, the better you can move on the mat. Kendall Jenner is Billy. She'll always have your back. I'll keep it real, but above all, I'll keep it on the DL. Roy Choi is Max. Nix that delivery order. You're cooking in tonight. Chef, what's on the menu today? Charlie D'Amelio is Coco. Making sure you and your moves aren't sus. Hey, y'all. You ready to dance? Snoop Dogg is Dungeon Master. Slay the games you love. Your quest begins now, player. So, if you're looking to explore your interests, learn a new skill, settle a debate, or just have fun, start using Meta's AIs.
right. All right, so this is our first effort at training a bunch of AIs um, that are a bit more fun. So um, you, you'll have to tell us what you think. But look, this is, this is early stuff, right? Um, you know, these, these, they still have a lot of limitations, uh, which you'll, will be apparent when you use them. Um, you know, unlike the meta AI, uh, they don't, for the most part, have access to real-time information yet, although we're working hard to get that in. We'll get that in over the coming weeks and months. Um, and, you know, there's just a, a lot that we're going to continue improving um, and tuning as we get more feedback. But, you know, what I, what I think you're going to see as you interact with them is that they each have uh, unique backstories and interesting opinions that they bring to this. And that will just come out even more as they evolve over time. And I also think it's going to be fun to watch them interact with each other, too. So that's, uh, so that's that. Um, we've, we're also very focused on, um, on giving all of you the ability to build AIs, too. Um, so we've been creating something that we call AI Studio. And it is a platform for building um, these kind of AIs. And we're starting by opening up the API for integrating into our messaging apps to start. And that's going to open in the coming weeks. We are also building a sandbox so that you know, people who don't code can also train AIs like this. And we're working on that and iterating on it. And we hope to have that out sometime early next year. And we're also working on bringing all of this uh, to the metaverse, too, where you're going to be able to have these embodied, these AIs will be able to be embodied as avatars. Um, you'll be able to make them as NPCs in the different games and experiences that you build and all of the different horizon worlds. And I think that that's going to be really neat. Now, in addition to this, um, we're also um, making it so that businesses can use these because I think that there's a very big use for businesses to want to engage with customers for commerce and support. And we are actually launching um, with a, a very small number of businesses in Alpha today. Um, we're going to focus on really dialing this in before we roll it out more broadly. I think that this is going to be you know, a challenging optimization. So I think this is going to be a lot of the next year. We're going to be kind of focused on building this out for businesses before we release this more broadly. But I'm really excited to begin on that journey with that alpha today. We also um, are excited about getting this in creators' hands um, so that you can build AIs that represent you to help you grow your community and engage with your community. Um, but you know, one of the things is, as we're building that, that's what we, we think is going to come sometime in probably the first half of next year. Uh, because we think that getting the brand safety on that is just really critical, right? We want to make sure that if you're a creator, that you can train these AIs. That way, they're going to say things that just kind of reflect the way that you would want to represent your brand and your community. Um, and you know, that's, that's still going to require a bit of work to, to get there. We want to make sure we do this thoughtfully. So for this very first release, we thought it would be a little easier to, to start by making up some new characters rather than trying to make something that has perfect fidelity to, some, to, a, to a kind of a real creator. But we'll get there. Um, it is important to do all of this very thoughtfully, right? Because generative AI, it's, um, it's powerful. There's a lot of awesome potential. But there are also clearly going to be some new challenges that come with this, too. And you know, some of these challenges are going to look a lot like the ones that our integrity teams um, have gotten world class at and a lot of experience dealing with, with those kind of challenges over the, over the last set of years. But there are also undoubtedly going to be some new challenges, too. And we've tried to you know, think about this in advance and, 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 and brainstorm as to what these would be and build as many safeguards in as we can. Um, we've been training and fine tuning the models to fit our safety and responsibility guidelines. We've done a lot of red teaming um, with experts on this. We've been building guardrails around inappropriate conversations. And of course, we share the system cards for all these systems publicly so that way people can can look at, at, at what the systems do and how they work and can give us feedback on that. Um, we're also taking the step of rolling this stuff out a bit more slowly than we normally would. So that way, you know, as issues come up, as we're, we're rolling this out, we can address them before we get to scale. And you know, overall, we are, we're really focused on making sure that this technology um, will be beneficial to our lives and additive to our social interactions, uh, because that's what we're here to do. 
I, I'm really optimistic about this. I mean, I think that this is going to enable a, a wide range of new use cases. I mean, some of the stuff that we showed today, but a lot more to come too. And I think that this is just going to transform how people use all of our products, from feeds uh, to chat to all the metaverse stuff to virtual and augmented reality. Um, I think it's going to change how businesses and creators um, think about these platforms too. And one area that I am especially interested to see is how the advances in AI intersect with advances in building the next computing platform. So that brings me to the last thing that I want to show you today, which is the next generation of Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses. Now, these are designed um, so you can stay in the moment and stay connected without having to take your phone out. You can capture what's going on around you. You can share with your friends um, in the world. Everything about this is upgraded from the first version. The cameras are a lot better, so the images and videos that you capture are a lot clearer. Um, the audio is a lot better, so when you're listening to music or podcasts or taking calls, um, that's a lot better. Um, they're lighter, they're more comfortable, and there are a lot more styles, too. But the most interesting thing about this isn't any of those specs. It's that these are the first smart glasses that are built and shipping with Meta AI in them. So starting in the US, you're going to get this state-of-the-art AI that you can interact with hands-free wherever you go. So you know, let's say you're grilling with your family and you want to know how long you need to be cooking that chicken for. You know, or you're playing pickleball and hits the line and you want to know if that's a fault. She disagrees, but you know the truth. <laughs> or let's say you just want to settle a debate, you know, some trivia as you're going out through the world. Just ask your, meta, your Ray-Ban Meta glasses and they'll respond and, and, and get you the answer. And you know, the thing is, is that this is just the beginning, right? Because this is just audio. It's basically text. Next year, starting next year, um, we're going to be issuing a free software update to the glasses that makes them multimodal. So the glasses are going to be able to understand what you're looking at when you ask them questions. So if you want to know what the building is that you're standing in front of, um, or if you want to translate a sign that's in front of you to know what it's saying, um, or if you need help fixing this sad, leaky faucet, um, you can basically just you know, talk to Meta AI and look at it, and it'll walk you through it step by step how to do it. So that's, um, you know, I, I think that smart glasses are going to be an important platform for the future. You know, not only because they're the natural way to put holograms in the world so we can put digital objects you know, in our physical space, but also because if you think about it, smart glasses are the ideal form factor for you to let an AI assistant see what you're seeing and hear what you're hearing. And before this last year's AI breakthroughs, you know, I kind of thought that smart glasses were only really going to become ubiquitous once we really dialed in you know, the holograms and the displays and all of that stuff, which we're making progress on, but is, is somewhat longer. Um, but now, you know, I think that the AI part of this is going to be just as important in smart glasses being widely adopted as any of the other augmented reality features. Now, b before we were before even any of these AI advances came up, we, we'd started planning this product. And before all of that, um, we, we built in one more feature into these smart glasses that uh, we thought would be pretty awesome. And that is that for the first time, you are going to be able to live stream to your friends and followers from your glasses. So and I was chatting about this with, um, with Rocco, who is the, the head of wearables at our, our partner in making these, Essilor Luxottica. And, um, and I asked him, like, hey, do you, do you have any ideas for who would be a good person to take these for a test drive? And I think he had a good idea. So let's go check this out. Hey, Meta. Good Charles. Calling Charles on WhatsApp. 
Hey, Rocco. Ciao, ciao. How are you doing? All good. And you? Good, good. Did you get the glasses we sent you? Yeah. I'm trying the glasses now for the first time. I can't wait to see your point of view. Uh, thanks to you, Rocco. It was great to catch up, and uh, I'm going to take this for a test drive now. Ciao. Hey, Meta. Take a video. Let's try some music. We are here live at the track. Everybody is ready to race, and I am getting ready too. Let's go. Switching to glasses. If I became a race car driver, what would my nickname be? Rocco the Rocket. Not bad. All right, so, so being able to share you know, what you're doing live with your friends and and followers while staying completely in the moment is the kind of thing that you can only do on, on smart glasses. So, all right, these Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses, we're launching them on October 17th, uh, starting at $299, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all think of them. Okay, so, um, so this has been a busy year. <laughs> all right. And those, those are the main things that I wanted to share with you. Um, you know, a little long, but, but, but hopefully worth it. Um, we've got Quest 3, the first mainstream mixed reality headset, and the most powerful headset that we have ever shipped. Yeah. We've got AI Studio giving you the ability to interact with and soon build your own set of AIs for assistance, entertainment, and just getting things done, interacting with people in a fun way in the way that you would online. AI Studio. And we've got Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses, the next generation of the glasses with better camera and audio, and the first smart glasses with Meta AI built in. And you know, as, as all this technology keeps developing, I just keep going back to this this question that I, that I asked up front about for the future of human connection, how are we going to weave together the wonderful physical world that we have with this vibrant digital world that we're building into something that is better than we have today? And I, I think you can start to see from some of these building blocks that we're talking about today how this is going to come together. Mixed reality unlocks the ability to put digital objects into the physical world, advances in AI, allow us to create different AI personas to help us get different things done. And smart glasses are making progress towards eventually integrating all these technologies into something that we can wear anywhere, wherever we go. But to build the future, it's not just enough to make this possible. We have to make it so that it is affordable and accessible to everyone. And that's why we focus a lot of our innovation, not just on, on the groundbreaking innovations, but on making sure that these things are going to be accessible to everyone. Because to us, that is just as important as advancing the state of the art. So now, as we begin the, the next chapter here, as we get these all in your hands, I think a lot of the fun really begins because we get to see all the energy and creativity that all of you are going to bring to this uh, to see what is possible. As always, it is an honor to be on this journey building this with you. Thank you all for coming out to connect. And now I'm going to hand it over to our chief technology officer, Boz. Thank you. All right, we got mixed reality, artificial intelligence, smart glasses. It's a fun time to see the future taking shape right before our eyes. 
And we're going to bring these futuristic technologies to market, just like Mark said, to the mass market in a way that nobody else can. So let's take a deeper dive into each of those, starting with Quest. Now, we can't talk about Quest 3 without recognizing what made it possible. The Quest 2, first announced here at Connect in 2020, and it was a game changer for the industry, not just for us. I mean, it set the standard for what a modern headset should be. It's the device that introduced VR to the mainstream. It helped tens of millions of people have their first experience of this future. And now, three years later, Quest 3 is the beginning of the next wave. It builds on all the things that people love about Quest 2, but it also brings something completely new to the mass market, mixed reality. This new headset still enables all the immersive VR experiences that people love on Quest, but it can also deliver new experiences that blend your physical and your digital environments together. This isn't one or the other. It can do both. Sometimes you want to be fully immersed, and sometimes you want to see everything that's happening around you augmented with digital objects, and sometimes it'll even be both at the same time. Games can now incorporate your surroundings into the gameplay. And if you're watching live sports, it can transition from your own immersive private theater to a big screen on your living room wall. And wherever you are, all you have to do is double tap the side of the headset to switch between a fully immersive space and a blended environment. You experience the difference mixed reality brings from the very moment you put on your Quest 3, because the first thing you see is the world around you. But to enhance that full color pass through on the Quest 3, we've increased the resolution, we've improved the color accuracy, we've reduced distortions and latency. And you're not just seeing a live video feed of the space that you're in. Quest 3 can understand your space and blend it with the virtual world. That begins with understanding where it's safe for you to move around. That's right, no more manually setting up your PlayStation boundary. <laughs> Quest 3 does that automatically. This extends to room capture, so it automatically maps your space and understands elements like walls, furniture, and objects. Once they're mapped, they become a part of your virtual environment too. This makes a lot of new experiences possible. Games can bring your surroundings into their gameplay. So in first encounters, an alien spaceship descends from your ceiling and lands on your coffee table. And next year, you'll be able to customize your space with a library of augments that interact with the world in ways that physical objects can't. These can be dynamic 3D objects or 2D displays, and they can all exist together in the same space. You can size, place, and spatially anchor augments, so every time you put on your headset, they're right where you left them. Augments can blend parts of your favorite VR experiences into the world around you. You can keep Beat Saber trophies on your shelf, place life-size artifacts from games like Population One or Asgard's Wrath in your living room, or you can bring your favorite artists and stations to life with interactive music players from iHeartRadio. I mean, we're just getting started with what you'll be able to do to enhance your world with augmented reality. Some of the best new titles coming to Quest 3 take advantage of this mixed reality capability, and you'll hear about those in a few minutes. Now, as Mark mentioned, this is the most powerful Quest we've ever made because it's the world's first device to feature Qualcomm's new Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 platform. And the Quest developers that we have already building on Quest 3 have told us that this chipset has let them push graphics and gameplay to places that have not been possible until now. You will feel the power immediately when you put out, take out an app that has already op been optimized to take advantage of what Quest 3 is capable of. And it does all of this, by the way, on a standalone headset. No wires, no battery pack, no console to plug into. We've also made big improvements to the display and the optics stack. This is a new display system and a new generation of the same pancake lenses that we debuted on Quest Pro last year. The result is an almost 30% increase in resolution. Those pancake lenses are also one of the reasons we've been able to slim down the Quest 3. It's a lot more comfortable to wear, thanks to this thin profile and more even weight distribution. The controller's got an upgrade too. 
you can say goodbye to the tracking ring. This allows for a much slicker, more ergonomic design that feels like a natural extension of your hand. And of course, speaking of hands, that's another great way to use your Quest 3. With hand tracking and a new direct touch system, you can put down your controllers and interact with Quest in the same way that you would a touch screen. We've also got an all new range of accessories. For the first time, you can choose from multiple color options for your facial straps and interface. And there's a great new charging dock too. Starting at $499, this is gonna be the best value spatial computing headset on the market for a long time to come. But just being the best headset doesn't mean all that much without all the things that you can do on it. So next up, we're gonna talk about all the great content coming to Quest 3. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Manuel here, and I'm gonna try the Quest 3 for the first time. Yo, it's Tech Man Ju. Let's hop into Quest 3. Let's get it. Ready? Let's get it. Engage in warm up mode. Rolling. We are warm and ready to go. This is anything right there. Look at oh my goodness. Now this is gonna be fun. great to see so many of you in the audience here in Menlo Park today. We are so proud of what Quest 2 has done to shape an entire industry. And for me, the single most important thing it did was help our community of developers reach a massive audience of people hungry for the best titles. Quest developers have built the strongest VR ecosystem in the world. And the numbers speak for themselves. Over $2 billion have been spent on games and apps in the Quest Store. Yeah. As a result, developers of all sizes are growing and sustaining their businesses. And now, after almost a decade of bringing world-class immersive titles to VR, we're working with our developer community to pioneer yet another new frontier in mixed reality. We've made great progress. More than 100 new and upgraded titles are coming to Quest 3 this year, and more than half of those will showcase mixed reality features. But this is just the beginning. While we're excited to share what's possible in mixed reality today, it's going to be developers who will define this next era for our industry, just like you did with VR. So Quest 3 begins with an incredible foundation, the entire Quest library, and it will look better and play better thanks to next generation hardware. Let's check out some games. Take a look here at The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. You can see how Skydance was able to add more detail to the scenes, take advantage of increased draw distances, and boost the overall resolution of their textures. Quest 3 provides improved processing power so you can choose the features and improvements that your players will be the most excited about. Another great example, Asgard's Wrath 2, which we announced at the Meta Game Quest Gaming Showcase. It's an amazing game visceral combat, massive, epic-scale environments, and gorgeous visuals that take advantage of Quest 3's improved performance. Asgard's Wrath 2 is coming to Quest 2, Quest Pro, and Quest 3 on December 15th. And 
We've got a special surprise for Quest 3 buyers. Asgard's Wrath 2 is included free with your purchase. Why do I have a feeling a bunch of us are going to call in sick that day? There are many more big games coming. To name a few, we've got Assassin's Creed, Ghostbusters, Stranger Things VR, and Sega's Samba de Amigo. And Roblox will make it easy to create, publish, and distribute experiences in VR. As Mark said, the launch of Xbox Cloud Gaming means hundreds of the best titles from the Xbox ecosystem will be playable on Quest. With so many titles to choose from, we want to make it easy for everyone to discover the best games. Quest Plus is our new subscription service that delivers two hand-picked games from the ever-growing Quest library each month. In October, subscribers will get access to Onward and Little Cities. And if you buy the 512 gig model of Quest 3, it comes with a free six-month subscription to Quest Plus. We're also bringing some great new games to Horizon Worlds. <laughs> which can now support improved experiences like Super Rumble, a first-person shooter that launched in July, and Citadel, an adventure game that launched this month. Games like these are built to be social from the ground up. So we've made it easier to get together with friends and jump straight into a world. Social experiences are growing fast on Quest, especially when combined with games. And we want every developer to have the option to add social features to their titles. So we're committed to expanding the social connective tissue of the Quest platform over the coming year. We'll make it easier to find and meet up with friends and travel together to a destination, whether it's a multiplayer game or a virtual world. Here, you can see me joining my crew for a super rumble session. <laughs> Once we're all together, it's easy to jump straight into the game. Obviously, my avatar with the two-tone blue hair. And this is another way we're improving our social features. I look more like myself because our avatars can represent a much wider range of people. We have more options for body types, makeup and face paint, hair color, and more. And because Horizon Worlds now works on web and mobile, the social element is even better. You can meet up with your friends no matter what device everyone is on. Moving on to fitness and wellness, another place where developers have discovered a Quest superpower that millions of people love. And now, with mixed reality, even more is possible. With less Mills body combat, you can turn your home into your virtual gym. Feel the freedom to move, hit targets, and dodge walls, all while working it up a sweat and having fun with your favorite coaches. Quest 3's advanced resolution makes Supernatural even more stunning and vibrant. Work out in environments like the Galapagos Islands that look more real than ever before. And the Within team is working hard to make fitness accessible to more people. Supernatural is now only $9.99 per month starting today. There are so many great exercise options on Quest, whether it's a boxing class or interval training. And now, one of the world's most popular fitness programs is coming. FedExR will bring Zumba classes to VR for the first time. Also coming soon, Quest 3 will have reimagined wellness experiences from Headspace. They've built a great app that uses immersion, the immersion of VR to help you be more mindful. <laughs> Trust me, this is the app I need most right now. <laughs> Quest 3 turns any space into an awesome immersive home theater, 
and offers entertainment that you can't get anywhere else. X Stadium is streaming immersive NBA games and League Pass. Subscribers can check out multi-game mode, which lets you watch multiple NBA games at once. And if consuming cheese and crackers is more your sport, you can hang out with your new roommates, Wallace and Gromit. Or sit front row, catch your favorite artists perform at Red Rocks and iHeartRadio live concerts. And you can watch videos on YouTube VR or movies, TV, and sports from streaming apps like Peacock and Pluto TV. There's also some big new updates for getting work done. For companies that want to deploy Quest, we have a wide range of business-critical work apps, like Adobe Substance 3D Modeler, which allows you to sculpt in 3D, in VR, on desktop, or between both surfaces. Microsoft Mesh for Teams is entering public preview. The pharmaceutical company, Takeda, is using it to offer employees immersive experiences that facilitate onboarding and collaboration and help create a sense of belonging. Speaking of more big launches in the works, later this year, you'll be able to leverage your favorite Microsoft 365 productivity apps like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. And coming soon, Windows 365 will offer a new way to securely stream the Windows experience to your MetaQuest device, including personalized apps, content, and settings. On top of this, next month we're launching the number one thing that businesses have asked for, MetaQuest for Business. It comes with user, app, and device management, plus enterprise-grade consumer support. <laughs> Quest 3 is coming with an immense offering of original titles, and some of the best immersive experiences are joined by titles that explore the incredible potential of mixed reality. We couldn't have done any of this without the amazing community of developers who have redefined what's possible on Quest. Honestly, the best part about my job is getting to work so closely with so many of you here today. <laughs> and I can tell you that Meta's commitment to this community is stronger than ever. Just like we're continuing to build VR together, we're excited to be at the beginning of this next great wave of innovation in our industry. And we can't wait to build the future with you. Thank you.
connected to the people you care about while remaining present in the world around you. We started this journey in 2021 when we launched Ray-Ban Stories with our amazing partner, SLR Lusotica. This enabled us to see the potential of smart glasses put into action. People have created millions of moments of connection with our glasses. We learned so much about what they love the most and what they want us to improve. We heard all of your feedback, and we thank you for it, because it has helped us redesign the new generation of smart glasses from the inside out. We are so excited today to introduce you to the new Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses Collection. Yes! People really love to be able to capture photos and videos without the need to pull out their phone. With smart glasses, you no longer have to choose between capturing the moment or truly experiencing it. First up, the new ultra-wide 12-megapixel camera takes beautiful photos and 1080p video. With a powerful new processor and Meta's enhanced computational photography, we have better image processing, video stabilization, and much faster performance. This new glasses also comes with 8x the memory. With 32 gigs, you can now store over 100 videos and 500 photos right there in your glasses. But check it out for yourself. Here's some of the amazing pictures and videos that my fantastic teammates have taken. We've been testing these glasses over the last few months. Now, I'm clearly not as cool as my teammates. I don't go skydiving every day. I'm mostly taking pictures and videos of my cats. Chipotle and adobo. I think these are great pictures. And Chipotle and Adobo Miller are definitely cool cats. <laughs> we have also made it easier to seamlessly share photos. If I want to send a picture of Chipotle to my best friend Heidi, all I have to do is to say, hey Meta, send a photo to Heidi. The glasses will take a fantastic photo and send it directly to my BFF Heidi in the app where we usually chat, all without me having to take out my phone. <laughs> now let's get back to video. Video recordings, they don't just look better thanks to the awesome camera. They sound better because we've added five microphones spread around the glasses. This microphone array, it lets you record immersive audio when capturing videos. It means you can relive the moment in surround sound exactly as you experienced it. Whether it is your dog barking in front of you, your cats meowing behind you, your kids screaming to the left, and your partner yelling to the right, Truly immersive video to capture your memories. <laughs> this mic array, it also helps you make the best hands-free calling experience. Your voice comes through crystal clear, even in windy or noisy environments. <laughs> Another thing that people really loved about their glasses was the speakers. And we knew this was a place that we could deliver an even better experience this generation. Yeah. We have completely redesigned our custom speakers to a 50% higher max volume, and we doubled the bass. Yeah. Boom! Yeah. 
We have also improved directional audio to help reduce audio leakage. So it's only you listening to your tunes. But all of this technology, it only matters when you're actually wearing the glasses. So we put in a lot of work to make them even more stylish and comfortable than ever before. <laughs> we have been able to make them lighter. We have rebalanced the weight. The frames are slimmer and it's more flexible, all for a more comfortable fit. You can still get the iconic Ray-Ban Meta Wayfarer in standard and large sizes. But now, they are joined by the all-new Ray-Ban Matter Headliner. Yeah! Check out the curves. It's rounded, it's retro, it's classic. <laughs> we wanted to celebrate the awesome tech and the oomph that we have packed into these glasses. So check out the new options for transparent frames. Yeah! You can get them in caramel, in jeans, and in rebel black. <laughs> but of course, you can still get them in the classic matte black and shiny black too. <laughs> and with the Ray-Ban Remix platform, now you can fully customize and personalize your choice of frames and lenses with more than 150 different combinations. Woo! <laughs> All of this goodness, it comes in a gorgeous new charging case that is slimmer and 32% lighter. It looks like the iconic Ray-Ban case, and it gives you eight additional charges for up to 36 total hours of use. And beyond all of this, We've also got some totally new features coming to smart glasses for the first time ever. Live streaming. Yeah. Creators are always looking for better ways to share their point of view. And live streaming from your glasses is a truly unique way to let your followers see what you're seeing in real time and let them participate in your experience. You can stay focused on what you are best at. And your followers, they can see it all from your perspective. Let's check out how easy it is to live stream from your glasses. Simply start your life from Instagram or Facebook the way you always do. A glasses icon will automatically show up right there in the app. When you double click on your glasses, you immediately switch from your phone camera to your glasses camera. You can toggle back and forth throughout your live stream. And to keep you present and in the moment, a simple touch and hold on the side of your glasses anytime. And you can hear how many people are watching you live and a readout of the most recent comment. <laughs> Our smart glasses help people connect in ways that just are not possible on any other device today. We cannot wait to see what creators will share from this new perspective. The other new feature, AI. As Mark mentioned earlier, we have been working to bring the power of AI into all of our products. And starting in the US, Smart glasses will be our first device with Meta AI built in. <laughs> Meta AI can help you be more creative. It can inspire you with new ideas, and it can deliver you useful information. And it does it all on the go, hands free. Yeah. <laughs> Let me share with you how I personally use this. So I'm great at taking videos on my cat, Chipotle. Adobo, but I'm not as good at writing funny captions for Instagram. 
So when I take a video like this with my glasses and I want to share it, I can ask Meta AI to help me out with what to say. Hey Meta, write me a funny caption for my cat Adobo running on his wheel. Adobo the cat, where exercise meets existential crisis. Hashtag cats of Instagram. Hashtag cat wheel. Existential crisis indeed. Now that my cat has had its workout, it's my turn. I love spending time in Sedona. And when I'm there, I'm always taking impromptu hikes. When I'm on the move though, Meta AI can help me come up with ideas for where to go. Hey Meta, what's a short hike in Sedona that has gorgeous views? A nice short hike with beautiful views in Sedona is the Cathedral Rock Trail. A moderate climb offering stunning red rock formations and breathtaking vistas. Meta AI makes your smart glasses a whole lot smarter. And it's going to get even more powerful with real-time search capabilities. Soon, you'll be able to get up-to-date information on nearly anything. Restaurants, hotels, points of interest, and news. And on top of being able to speak to Meta AI, Soon you're going to be able to show it things using the camera. If I'm out on my hike and I see something interesting like this, I can simply ask Meta AI to tell me about what it is that I'm looking at. Based on the image from the camera, it can give me the answer. This is the Chapel of the Holy Cross. It was commissioned by local sculptor Marguerite Brunswick Stodd and inspired by the Empire State Building. As our AI models get more powerful, your glasses will get more and more useful. And we all know this, AI is getting better fast. We think you're gonna love all the different things that you can do with these glasses. They're loaded with better tech and new features, and the price still starts at $2.99. <laughs> You can pre-order right now. Yes. And we will hit retail stores on October 17 in 15 countries. My team and I, we truly had a blast building this for you. And from the bottom of our hearts, we know you are going to love this. Cheers. That's it. Oh, we are live. Wow, these are dope. Hey, Meta, call Eric. Calling Eric. Yo, what's up? Yo, Eric, yeah, let's go with the silk. Hey, Meta, send a photo to mom on WhatsApp. Say cheese. <laughs> Cute. Hey, Meta, what mocktail pairs well with an avocado pesto pasta? A refreshing cucumber lime mocktail pairs well with avocado pesto pasta. Wow, that's fire. What does it sound like? <laughs> it's like all around me. Hey, Meta, take a video. All right, let's go. You look good. What else can these do? It's been an incredible year in AI, both for the industry and here at Meta. Earlier this year, we introduced our family of large language models named Llama to researchers. And we received overwhelming interest, not only from that community, but also from developers and companies who are all seeking an open model for innovation control. So in July, we released Llama 2, our next generation with open access for the industry. And the response has blown us away. Since releasing Llama, we've seen a lot of momentum and innovation with more than 30 million downloads, and 10 million of those were just in the last 30 days. Yeah. And the open source community has also really embraced our models. We've fine -tuned, they fine-tuned and released over 7,000 derivatives. And on average, across standard benchmarks, they've improved our performance by nearly 10%. We've also added industry partners like IBM, Cloudflare, and Google Cloud. 
And today, we're thrilled to announce an expanded relationship with Amazon Web Services as our first managed API partner for Llama 2. So now organizations of all sizes can access our models on Amazon Bedrock, where it's going to be easy to get started, customize, and integrate Llama into any application using just an API key. Now, we've made a lot of progress, but our journey with Llama is just beginning. We're continuing to invest in the next generation of AI models, and I look forward to telling you more about Llama 3 next year. <laughs> so let's talk about today and how we're leveraging uh, technology from Llama 2 alongside research advancements we've made in other areas like image generation to deliver some of the experiences that Mark introduced earlier. Let's talk about our conversational AIs first. Everyone speaks differently, and truly conversational AIs will need to as well. We wanted our AIs to feel engaging and not robotic. So we took this into account when we were building on top of Llama 2 to create our initial set of AIs. The first thing we did was create specialized data sets that are anchored in natural conversation. This helped us refine our model so our AIs respond in a conversational and friendly tone. Next, we lengthened our model context to improve performance so that our AIs are capable of these deeper back and forth chats rather than these short threads. And last, we optimized our output length for different form factors like mobile or smart glasses so that our AIs won't give you a novel when you just need a sentence. And as Mark mentioned, we also created the AI Studio which is a platform for creating and testing and sharing AIs across the company and our products. This platform also enabled us to build our AIs in a safer and more responsible way. If you've spent any time playing with conversational AIs, you probably know that they have the potential to say things that are inaccurate or even inappropriate. And that can happen with ours too. This is why we've taken many steps to mitigate those challenges by building responsibly and prioritizing safety from the very start. This includes following our own responsible use guidelines that we opened publicly with Llama 2. We established strong safety layers on the inputs and outputs of our models. We spent thousands of hours red teaming our AIs with experts. And red teaming is a iterative process where you try to get the model to say harmful things, then repeat, then apply fixes and repeat. We're also releasing system cards alongside our AI so we can be transparent and people can understand what's inside and how they were built. Large language models are amazing pieces of technology and you can integrate them with other software services like search engines and trip planners or even code interpreters. And with Meta AI, we saw an opportunity to take this capability and create an assistant that can do more than just write poems. So behind Meta AI, we built an orchestrator. And it can seamlessly detect a user's intent from a prompt and route it to the right extension. And the first extension we're making available is web search. So if your query requires real-time information, Meta AI will automatically ask Bing to get you the answer. Whether you want to know the history of Eggs Benedict or how to make it or even where to get it from San Francisco, Meta AI can help ensure you have access to the most up-to-date information through the power of search. Now, our conversations can happen in ways that go beyond words. Pictures and images have become a huge part of how we chat. That's why we integrated an image generation model called Emu into Meta AI. And with Emu, we can now create beautiful high resolution images in just five seconds. Outside of Meta AI, we took Emu and we used it to create new visual experiences across our products, starting with stickers. And stickers have become a huge form of communication with billions of them shared each month across our apps. We wanted to take this extremely popular feature and reimagine it with AI to provide people infinitely more options for self-expression. 
And one of the cool things behind AI stickers is that it leverages both our language and our image generation models. And combining these modalities helped us improve the style, the diversity, and even quality of what we could create. And our AI stickers are really fast. It only takes about three seconds on average to generate multiple options that you can share instantly. OK, people love taking photos and sharing them across our platforms. Our AI media editing tools will let you do that in new ways. And we call them Backdrop and Restyle. And they're coming soon to Instagram in the US. With Restyle, you can create a new dimension of visual flair to your photos. By just saying a simple word or phrase, you can now reimagine or create any filter that you can think of. So if you feel like infusing you know, a cozy vibe, you can type crochet. Or if you want to add a more artistic look, you can just type watercolor. And Restyle makes this really easy. And with Backdrop, it leverages one of our most popular model releases from this year. Segment anything. And it can cut out any object in any image with just a single tap. So now, you can reimagine your background and change the scene with just a few taps. I might type something like, surrounded by puppies, and this feature will give me an entirely new story for my photo. All right, so I covered some of our new AI products and features and some of the technology that's powering them. You know, it's early days, and we are just getting started. We've worked hard to build this amazing foundation. So on behalf of the whole team, we can't wait to see what you all do with this. Thank you. I've been trying to drag my phones out to experience this. So I turned to Meta AI for some help. Imagine a picnic overlooking a gorgeous sunset on a mountain. Who can resist? Everybody needed a little help doing some last minute planning. A little extra help goes a long way. It's so great to be here to talk a little bit more about what went into building our AIs. We've taken a unique and very meta approach to creating them, and there are lots of them coming. To design the initial set, we collaborated with internal and external experts across a range of disciplines, like writers, producers, and user researchers, along with our civil rights, diversity, and technical teams, to build a set of characters that reflect the wide array of interests that people have. Whether you're looking for travel tips, gameplay, advice, or just a great conversation, these AIs offer fun and novel experiences. To create them, we use technology from Llama 2, but we reimagined what would be required to achieve an entertaining conversational experience. These foundational components of our model development process were used to build AIs that are consistent in tone and remain in character, while also being knowledgeable and engaging. Multimodality was core to bringing this experience to life. We filmed people to represent these AIs and then had to use generative techniques to turn a bunch of disparate animations into the cohesive experience that you see today. Then we had to orchestrate it all in a way that felt seamless, bringing the chats and the visual elements together. And of course, our character development process wouldn't have been possible without careful prompt engineering so that each character in conversation 
can stay true to their unique personality and tone. Now, we knew that our universe of AIs would grow, and so we made AI Studio to support this endeavor across Meta. It's designed for us to responsibly build and prompt engineer, test, benchmark, red team, and debug all of these AIs we built. And it's the central spot for deploying them and managing them too. You know, as an engineer, I'm really excited about the development velocity a platform like this can enable company-wide. And AI Studio also forms the foundation for the sandbox that we're working on, where next year, a bunch of people will be able to experiment with creating and sharing all of the AIs they've personally built. Our work with AI is just getting started. In the future, we'll see AIs adopt an even greater level of realism, embodiment, and connectedness as they move through both physical and virtual worlds, interacting both with people but also each other. We'll also build new models for text, image, and video generation that extend into 3D and enable the creation of new objects, characters, and entire worlds within the metaverse. When you look at the innovation on display today, we're taking a significant leap forward to unlock this new set of immersive experiences. AI is shaping the way that we're building the metaverse. And in turn, the metaverse is changing the way that we think about AI, with experiences that span different modalities, form factors, and applications that seemed like science fiction only a few years ago. On behalf of our entire team, it has been super special to share these new AI experiences with you and walk you through all of the advancements that have made them possible. And now to wrap things up, here's Boz. All right, all right. You guys have seen a lot of exciting announcements today. Just to summarize, mixed reality, artificial intelligence, smart glasses. You guys catch all that? Working my repetition game in. Um, this is a big year for new technology hitting the market. Uh, and it's, it is easy to forget how far we've come in just one year's time, right? We now have mixed reality that can combine your physical and digital worlds. That doesn't mean it's just not possible on any other category of device. And we can do all of that while still delivering all the wonderful, fully immersive experiences that only VR can offer. You know, these headsets, they're just designed from the ground up to go mainstream and mass market. If you were at home and you were playing a drinking game to this keynote, all of it, mainstream and mass market, those are your keywords. <laughs> You'd be in trouble right now, right? Like every social technology that we build, we have worked hard to make them as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. That is, and how it will always be, how Meta chooses to innovate. And now, we have artificial intelligence that can help us be more expressive, more connected, and more productive. It'll make your, your Instagram feed more creative, make your group chats more lively, make your virtual worlds on Quest more vibrant. And all of that is built on an open source foundation that technologists around the world can build on and improve. Each one of these innovations is pretty good on its own, I think you'll agree. But when you zoom out, I think you can see how they hold the promise to make something even better altogether. Our new smart glasses give you a glimpse of the way these two technological pathways eventually intersect, right? The glasses take some of the most fundamental parts of our digital and physical lives and bring them together. Digital lives, things like taking a photo and sharing it with friends, right? And the physical life of being present with people, and they integrate them together. So instead of choosing between, you know, staying connected and being present, uh, one becomes more naturally a part of the other. But the addition of artificial intelligence is something entirely different, right? That takes us much closer to our goal of a metaverse of augmented reality, blending physical and digital together, not just in immersive headsets, 
but also in the physical world, right? So along with the progress that we're making in avatars and in Horizon, it should be clear that we are steadily moving towards that vision of the metaverse that we first laid out here at Connect in 2021. I cannot express to you genuinely enough what a privilege it is to get to work on these next generation of technologies, not just to bring them into existence, but to do so in a way that makes them as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. I want to thank you all for being here today. I can't wait to see what you all build, and I can't wait for what's next. Thank you. everyone, my name is Melinda Davenport and I will be your guide to MetaConnect 2023 for the next two days. We are so looking forward to first the developer State of the Union, which talks about all of the innovation that we have going on at Meta. Super exciting. We also have lightning talks that you don't want to miss and that's coming up tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. But first, up next, an innovation conversation with our Chief Technology Officer Boz and the one and only Michael A. Brash. You don't want to miss it. Boz, I'm the CTO of Meta, and I'm joined today by our chief scientist, Michael Abrash. Welcome, Michael. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is your 10th Connect. Is that right? 
Uh, inconceivably, the answer is yes, it is my 10th Connect. Can you tell me, what, is, what was it like to you at the first Connect? Because I wasn't there. Well, the first Connect was actually one of the more remarkable experiences of my life. Um, the energy around it, the buzz, I mean, it hadn't been clear to me at all how many people were really excited about this whole VR thing. You know, it had really been an under the radar kind of small group of people. And walking out on that stage that first time and seeing like all those people who were really excited about what they thought the future was going to be. And they were right. Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. And I will tell a little personal anecdote. Uh, is that Michael is the reason uh, I do the work that I do today. Uh, now, certainly, Mark Zuckerberg made a strong pitch for me to, to join up and do this work. And if you know Mark, that's saying something. He makes strong pitches for a living. Um, but it, he wasn't the decider. It was my conversation with Michael uh, who really convinced me not only that I uh, could do this work and be of some value, which I was skeptical of, uh, but also that this was work that would not happen on its own. Uh, it would take the consistent application of force from people who believed in it to make it happen. First, uh, I'll say the phrase that I really like for that is the myth of technological inevitability, is that later, when you look mm -hmm. back on things from decades later, it's like, well, of course, how else could it have happened? It would have happened no matter what. But while it's happening, people make it happen. Specific people, specific choices get made in specific paths. And, you know, mm -hmm. we, we are making that happen. And the people who are coming to connect are really, that's the community that's making it real. So why don't you help us out? Talk people through what that vision is. What is that vision that we have been pursuing collectively now for more than a decade? It actually took me a few years to really fully understand this. And to explain it, I wanna go back 50 years to Xerox Park, the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center and the development of the first personal computer. What they put together there in the form of the Alto really was the world that we live in today. 2D surfaces with bitmap graphics, a pointing device and a keyboard. And they also invented ethernet. They invented the laser printer, WYSIWYG word processing, object-oriented programming, really the full package. And for the last half century, we've been living in the world they created. Mm -hmm. That is a super powerful world, obviously. For example, anybody listening to this, I guarantee you have a supercomputer in your pocket or in your purse. Right? Every single one of us does. We don't even have to ask. That's how much they change the world. But it's only a partial step towards the real vision. And the real vision is a world in which we can mix real and virtual in any way we want to serve our needs, to, to meet our goals. And that is the thing that we're creating, where we can drive our perceptions and allow us to act in the way we do in the real world. You have laid out and have been working on for a long time now a bunch of research areas, the areas that you feel the status quo, the technology that we have today is insufficient to deliver in its completion. What are the key research areas that you've been focused on uh, most lately? Yeah, that's a great point. That one thing I'll I'll point out is that we all grew up in a world of Moore's Law. We always knew there was going to be more compute next year. And the platforms have been consistent since Xerox PARC in the sense of, again, 2D surface pointing device keyboard. So that has kind of gotten us used to a world in which really everything's a software problem and the platform underneath it only changes in incremental ways. But what we're talking about here is really a change all the way from the bottom, where the hardware, the software, the applications all will evolve over time into much more powerful forms. You keep talking about the, 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 the input modalities, this touching the keyboard and the pointing device. And, you know, these were things that were highly contentious in the 50, 1950s and 1960s. Uh, you know, what were going to be the methodologies that people were going to use to get information to the computer? We since kind of zoomed in on one, sure, we replaced the mouse for direct touch in the case of touch screens. But otherwise, we've been incredibly consistent for a long time. And those modalities just don't work in augmented and virtual reality. Um, and so that's another area that, that is such a key piece that's so different from the previous generation of technology. Absolutely. In fact, that may end up being the most fundamental aspect of all, which is when you're walking around the world, you're not going to be popping up menus and pointing at them, right? You're not going to be tapping on surfaces all the time. What you want is you want the right thing to happen when you want it to happen. And that really comes down to a combination of being able to sense the world around you, of understanding your context, of having AI that can make sense of that to help you, and then of having this ultra low friction input that lets you act easily, intuitively, anytime, any place. 
all those pieces need to come together. So that's one of the big things that we have been working on developing. And we've talked many times publicly about EMG, electromyography, which I think is the future of how we will interact with the virtual world. It's something that lets us monitor the nerve impulses and small muscle movements in our wrists so that we can easily, um, privately, and with high bandwidth, interact with the digital world. For me, at least, this input story is an AI story. It's not just the sensing that you need uh, on the, the wrist, uh, ideally, to, to uh, detect those signals. It's also the artificial intelligence required to decode those, um, have enough of a general model that the entire population can get started, and then be able to personalize that model. Uh, and we're talking about something called coevolution, which is was foundational in the very earliest user interfaces being designed at Stanford Research Institute. Was this idea of coevolution? But it was so hard to do back then um, that basically almost all the evolution had to happen on the side of the consumer. The machine couldn't really help. And with today's AI powers, we can actually really help. Uh, adapt these models to each individual in the same way that we adapt people's news feeds to their personal preferences. Exactly. And, you know, a way to think about it is that when you click on an icon on a screen, it feels like, well, it's just a simple action, but there's a huge amount of context that goes into it. What application are you running? What icon is it? You, it funnels down your awareness into the one place you want to make the choice so you can do it with one single one bit action, basically. In the real world, that's much harder, right? The real world is way more complex. But what you can imagine is that that contextual AI that you were talking about actually does that scoping for you. So again, you can use EMG to simply pick the thing that you want as opposed to having to sort through all the possibilities. Um, so EMG all the way from the bottom up, you know, doing recognizing the nerve signals, customizing for each person, and then putting it all together to help you meet your goals. And the customizing for each person is a really interesting thing. Imagine that you had a keyboard that actually moved around under your fingers to be for what you meant to type, as opposed to forcing you to hit the keys where they are. That's how you can think of this co-evolution um, of how we're going to be doing input. It will learn you, you will learn it. It will be as efficient as it can possibly be. Yeah, one of the things that we shared recently was a demo of a keyboard that uh, you do where it's computer vision of my hands, and but there's no actual keyboard. And what was interesting about that was when I was trying to pretend there were keys, I typed much slower than when I just typed where I thought the keys should have been for my hands. And because of this type of adaptive uh, artificial intelligence and the way we trained that model, I was able to move it, uh, type at much higher speeds. Uh, which is a pretty incredible breakthrough if you think about it, uh, that how much I was having to adapt my hands to a keyboard that was designed for everybody whose hands might be smaller, bigger, different places in mind relative to my body. So there's a tremendous opportunity for this to be computing that's not only seamless and integrated, but also much more comfortable and much more accessible. So I love that example. And it's very specifically because the reason that it works so well for you once you stop trying to hit the keys is because what the machine learning is actually doing is it's trying to figure out the intent of what your finger motion is. It's not trying to figure out what mm -hmm. key you're hitting. It's saying, if you do this motion, I think that would be hitting the key M, for example. And so it was now bypassing this intermediate step of forcing you into that mold and was simply saying, what's your intent? And the more that we have machine learning that can understand our intent, the more intuitive the world gets. Now, some of these things are a little farther away. Um, certainly EMG is one that we're making a lot of progress on, but it still has a lot of more progress to be made. But some of these pieces are, are coming up much closer. You know, we're announcing here at Connect, we're rolling out smart glasses that have um, an AI assistant on them. Um, that alone is, I think, something that will be uh, meaningful for people. Can you talk through how you uh, think about the importance of AI to how these systems interact with us as people? Well, I certainly can. And to, to go back to sort of the beginning, for a long time, what we've been working towards is making the glasses basically platforms that extend your perception, that extend your memory, even extend your cognition to help you think through things. And in order to do that, the first thing they need to do is to be able to be on when you need them to be on. So we're working on basically sensors that can work in all conditions that work on low power that can be basically aware of your context. And then on top of that, 
the idea was you would have AI with this lo very low friction input. But a year ago, the answer about, well, what AI would have been, well, it's a research problem. Yeah. Now, That's right. LLMs have come along and they've answered that question, is that you put an LLM there and you make it multimodal as you described so that it can actually understand context. And all of a sudden you have this interface that can start to act proactively on your behalf they can start to anticipate your needs, they can scope down your choices, they can just make your life go more easily. Artificial intelligence is deep in many of the things that we do. We talked about computer vision. Computer vision is largely an artificial intelligence problem. We used you know, tremendous amount of training data and machine learning. Um, one of my favorite applications of this is uh, the progress that we're making on codec avatars. Can you talk to us about why these are so important for us and how they're working today? Sure. So the first thing I'll point out is that codec avatars are very much uh, AI. I mean, they are entirely machine learned and they are um, really a remarkable application of machine learning with tons and tons of data. So codec avatars <clears throat> consist of two parts. One is the encoder, which takes the data from the sensors and encodes your current state. And one's the decoder, which is on the receiving end, re-expands that into your avatar. And codec avatars are remarkably true to life. Um, I, I will say that I was shocked the first time I saw a really fully functional codec avatar that it's not just like a better avatar, it has leaped to the point where you feel like you are legitimately with that person. And <clears throat> you know, when I think about what, what is most key about the metaverse, the most interesting thing in the world is other people. It's always other people. And what is meta about? It's about connecting people. So the way we can do that is with Kodak avatars, you can have that genuine feeling that you're with another person. So for example, everybody has that first experience in VR where it's like, oh, I feel like I'm in this place, not like I'm looking at some place. I feel like I am here. And we haven't gotten to that point yet with avatars where after you're done, you know, in your mind, it's like, oh, I was just with that person. But codec avatars fully have the potential to take us there. And so I think this may be one of the most important aspects of the metaverse really blossoming into its full potential, which is simply the ability to put people in the same space with other people in a way that feels fully real, fully meaningful. Yeah, one thing I've learned a lot about uh, our research work over the last uh, decade is uh, a lot of times we're making incredible progress year over year, especially when we have such a clear vision of what we're trying to build for example, on codec avatars. And sometimes that progress goes into, in the case of codec avatars, fidelity, um, into the, our ability to reproduce it. Sometimes it goes into the capture, our ability to you know, build effective models from uh, photons that captured in a sensor. And sometimes it goes into performance. One of the really exciting things that we've done over the last year is start to get codec avatars into a place where not only do they look fantastic and can they be captured effectively uh, by somebody at home, but also that they can also be used on conventional, widely available hardware. Um, and these are each, all three of these are incredibly hard problems and they trade off against each other. And uh, here we have a team solving kind of all three uh, at once uh, in parallel. And just so proud of the progress that we've made there and, and something that we hope to continue to share more with people about as it becomes more available. So I wanna give us a chance to do some final thoughts. Uh, Michael, it's only fitting as this is your 10th Connect and you are historically the, the anchor uh, for this entire event uh, and we're, something we're very proud of. What are you most excited about working on right now? What's inspiring you uh, as you go to work day to day? Well, the first thing I'll say is I am, as I've always been, excited about all the things that we're doing because they all have to happen, right? <laughs> I mean, in the end, what I'm excited about is that that whole platform emerges as you know, the next generation thing that carries us for the next 50 years. And we're putting all those pieces in place, not just in research, but also on product. And I see that happening. And you can't say, well, we'll do these three, but the other ones don't happen, because then you just don't, you know, imagine if uh, at Park they had invented the laser printer, but not ethernet, not bitmap graphics. Well, you know, you don't get the same thing out of just a laser printer by itself. It was really the full package of right. everything together. Um, <clears throat> if I had to pick one thing, I would say that the personalized, contextualized, ultra low friction AI interface is the thing that I find most exciting. And the reason is 
you know, the way that hum humans interact with the digital world has only changed once ever. And that really was Doug Engelbark, Xerox Park, the Mac. And, you know, since then, we've been living in that world. And as we move into this world of mixing real and virtual freely, we need a new way of interacting. And so I feel that that has to be this contextualized AI approach. And, you know, getting that to happen is the thing that I find most exciting. I mean, it's, it is a once in a lifetime, you know, opportunity to really change the way that everybody lives. I share your enthusiasm about all this work, and I'm so glad to continue to be doing it with you all these years later. Thank you, Michael. Thanks. Wow, what an incredible conversation. It's so cool to be able to get a glimpse into the future. We hope that it has inspired you, the builders and doers of this innovative community. Coming up next, this is something that you definitely don't want to miss. More on what Mark and the team have been making announcements about in our developers State of the Union. Again, it's coming up next. You won't want to miss it.
This has been so fun-filled for you so far this morning. And after all of the exciting announcements, it's time to dive a little bit deeper. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Excellent. All right, so here with the latest news on the meta developer ecosystem and a first in-depth look at all of the exciting and new updated tools, programs, and features is Meta's Developer State of the Union. Please welcome and make some noise for Chris Pruitt. Hello, welcome to the Connect Developer State of the Union. Wow, it is awesome to be back in person with you all. Um, we got a lot to talk about today, and I want to say hello also to all the folks that are you know, dialing in from the live stream. Now, this is a session for developers. Um, it's for developers who are building for MetaQuest, uh, MetaSpark, and AI. In the next 45 minutes, you know, first I'm going to talk about the Quest ecosystem, then uh, Prabhu Parthasarathy is going to come on and talk about some of our developer tools uh, and products that we've built. Chaya Nayak will join us to speak about AI. And then Kimberly Unger is going to come and show some of the coolest stuff we've seen lately. Let's start with the Quest ecosystem. I feel like we sort of say this every year, but like the Quest just keeps getting bigger and bigger. In the Quest store now, over $2 billion has been spent on apps, games, and experiences. Uh, and that, that money is going to developers of all different shapes and sizes to allow them to grow their business. One in 12 titles on our platform has made $10 million or more in gross revenue. And we've shipped over 50 titles already. This year, we have a whole lot more coming in the holiday season. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about success with video games, right? Like, Fitness and wellness developers are finding huge success uh, because it turns out that millions of people are using VR today to help improve their well-being. Growth on App Lab has also been incredible. Um, you know, some of our largest and most accomplished studios 
are soft launching in lab, App Lab to get feedback about their applications or make modifications before a full store, a full store launch. Uh, Roblox, for example, soft launched in App Lab, uh, as has uh, Glassbreakers from Polyarch and uh, X8 from Thirdverse, just to name a few recent examples. All of this is about to get a lot bigger with the launch of MetaQuest 3. Now, you've heard you know, all the details already this morning. Um, Quest 3 is designed to run VR apps and games better than ever. It's got all this cool MR tech uh, you know, strapped onto it. It's got these low-profile lenses that's awesome. It's a smaller, slimmer form factor. But what does that mean for you? What does it mean for the developer community? Well, first of all, MetaQuest 3 packs a punch. It's twice the GPU power and about 30% more CPU power than Quest 2. Developers who've been working on MetaQuest 3 tell me that like, this power allows them to significantly increase the complexity of their scenes. Um, they're able to use effects, uh, like post-processing effects, like blur and blooms that were previously prohibitively expensive. They can crank their texture resolutions way up. And you know, in addition to just sort of raw power, We've been working on ways to make it easier for developers to deliver beautiful, real-time 3D software on Quest 3. This year, we announced a feature called Dynamic Resolution, um, which makes it easy to develop for developers to maintain you know, high VR frame rates by automatically adjusting the, the resolution of the display based on GPU load. So if the GPU is saturated, we scale display down a little bit so you maintain frame rate. But if the GPU is idle, we can scale it up and deliver the crispest image. Like application Space Warp, um, this technology is designed to make it easier for you to hit VR frame rates and deliver beautiful 3D scenes without spending all of your time uh, in, in performance optimization or having to make you know, visual quality compromises. Now, the Quest 3 display has a wider field of view and has a higher pixel density, uh, so everything on this device looks fantastic. Uh, and like MetaQuest Pro, it's using these low profile uh, pancake lenses. Now, upcoming titles like Asgard's Wrath 2, Ghostbusters, and Behemoth are absolutely going to shine on this device. And existing sort of graphic showcases like Red Matter 2, they just they look phenomenal. Now, we've had a lot of talk today about mixed reality, um, and Quest, Meta Quest 3 is a world class mixed reality device. The pass-through videos, 10x higher resolution, and it's really just a completely different experience in full color. We've also invested a lot in new APIs uh, for scene understanding, uh, occlusion, reliable spatial anchors. And this, this technology, I mean, let's be really clear, this technology is maturing quickly. And like the early days of VR, the, the sort of early days of MR are going to be about you all, the developer community, defining the grammar for MR and showing us what it can really do. But we're really excited already because even the early stuff we've seen, the, the early stuff coming out of the developer community has been super compelling. Um, titles like Laser Dance, Piano Vision, Espire 2, just make us super excited for the future. And it's not, it's really, it's not just mixed reality, right? It's a whole collection of technologies that we've been working on for years that are sort of coming together in this device. You know, hand tracking, for example, it's a natural fit for MR. And you know, on Quest 3, we've got high resolution trackers and a depth projector, and hand tracking is, is better than ever. Now, of course, as you know, um, developing a great title is you know, the first 90% of the work. And then there's the second 90% of the work where you actually have to promote it and market it and make it into like a viable business. And so this year we announced the existence of Oculus Publishing, which is a game publisher that actively funds and provides production support to high-end profitable games on Quest. Actually, many of the top titles that are on our platform today uh, were built with the support of Oculus Publishing, and it's a program that we plan to expand. But it's also really important that all developers have control over their own businesses. So this year, we've shipped a number of self-service tools that are 
designed to help developers promote, monetize, and make their apps successful. There's a, there's a ton of them. I'm just gonna go through like a list here. Uh, there's A-B testing for store promotion, promotional assets and price, so you can find like the optimal fit for your, for your app in our store. Um, there's a feature called Try Before You Buy, which allows uh, customers to test out your app before they decide to make a purchase decision, and you know, that requires zero code changes from you. We now have country-specific pricing for apps and in-app purchase. There's a feature called custom discount codes, which allow you to generate a code that gives a customer a discount on your app, and they're great for like, you know, giving back to your community or running an influencer campaign or wanting to track sort of other offline uh, marketing campaigns. We have self-service bundles, which allows you to run limited discounts on your titles as long as they've been on the store for at least 90 days. There's self-service pre-orders and coming soon pages, so you can actually get started with promotion even before your title launches, like 180 days before your title launches. And later this year, we're gonna ship a feature called VR Short Links, which will allow you to track uh, an off-platform campaign all the way from click through to conversion. Now, all this work is designed to increase the growth and scale of the MetaQuest ecosystem. And I hope you can tell that we're committed to making it the best developer ecosystem in the world. Now, I talked a lot about Quest. Uh, I want to spend a little bit of time touching on MetaSpark uh, and some of the work we've done to support that. 750 million people are already interacting with experiences built in MetaSpark each month. And for this developer community, we're introducing new tools and capabilities designed to make creation easier than ever. We've added skeletal animation blending and a timeline editor to improve the process of creating seamless and realistic animations. And I, you know, MetaSpark Studio is an awesome tool, but I know that there's a bunch of you who would like to just jump straight into the code. So the MetaSpark command line interface and VS Code extension those are for you guys. We've also developed debugging and profiling tools to accelerate creation, iteration, testing. Uh, and there's a whole set of new templates to help you get started on projects faster. Now, these are AR projects on Facebook and Instagram that are a way for developers, both new and experienced, to monetize at scale. You can build these things and hook them up to our ad manager, and you can drive deeper experiences across reels, feed, and stories. We got a lot more to talk about related to MetaSpark, so if you're interested, please make sure you come to our breakout sessions uh, or watch them later on demand to learn more. Now it's time for me to hand the mic over to Prabhu to talk about some of the cool tech that we've been building and what it means for you. Hello, everyone. Wow, what a day. So many announcements. I'm super excited. So Chris just spoke about the tremendous progress we have been making with the Quest ecosystem and our excitement for the possibilities with MetaQuest 3's incredible mixed reality capabilities. I'm going to break all of this a bit more about all the amazing tech we are building to make the MetaQuest ecosystem not just the best VR ecosystem for developers, but for everybody and for years to come. As the product manager for Presence Platform, my job is to bring innovative tech so you can unleash all your creativity. Our mission is to empower developers to build experiences that allow people to connect in ways that are fun, exciting, engaging, authentic, and meaningful. We are seeing some great traction with many developers already using features from Presence Platform across mixed reality, natural inputs, realistic presence, and more in all their apps. With MetaQuest 3, we expect to see this grow even more rapidly. I know you're all here to learn more about all the new developer stuff we are launching. So let's get going with the big story of the day, mixed reality. 
Great mixed reality experiences powered by presence platforms, AI technology, allow you to seamlessly blend the virtual and the physical world in a more immersive, natural, and intuitive way. And this is exactly what we've accomplished with MetaQuest 3. Our adaptive mixed reality engine intelligently understands and interacts with objects in your physical space. And today, I'm excited to share some updates that will allow you to push the limits of all that can, you can create with this. The first thing you'll notice on the MetaQuest 3 is the brand new space setup feature. This makes it magical to get started in MR with automated room layout detection. Honestly, you just have to experience it to believe how fast and intuitive this feels. The full color pass-through is significantly improved with higher resolution, better depth perception, and tons of stylization options. The new Mesh API provides geometric representation of a user space to make your app feel so much more realistic with fast collision and navigation. And coming soon, the Depth API will allow for occlusion of virtual objects with real-world objects and people. Now, taken together with the already available anchors and scene understanding capabilities, you have a robust MR toolset to build your next great experience. Now, those were some updates on mixed reality. Now, let's talk about inputs. We are enabling more natural and intuitive interactions on apps through a number of new features and updates. First, the big news here is that thanks to the AI powering our hand tracking technology, we've made up to 75% improvement in the perceived latency in our fast hand movement experiences. Now, what does that mean? You can now use hands for even the most challenging fitness experiences. And your users will have a much more natural and agile interactions. And just as a reminder, Interaction SDK is our library of very useful components that help you build delightful interactions in all your experiences. Since Connect last year, we've been chipping away at making Interaction SDK better with new and improved primitives, including improved surface detection, touch, locomotion, and support for body pose gesture detection. Now, I'm also excited today to share two new ways for you to have your users interact in these apps. First, a very popular developer request is finally here. Multimodal inputs will enable the use of hands and controllers at the same time. We are really excited about the potential implications here. You could use a controller in one hand while gesturing with the other, or directly poke buttons with your fingers while holding a controller. Second, we are launching micro gestures, giving developers the ability to do stuff like micro swipes and taps in hands-enabled experiences. And for users, a more lightweight, comfortable, and precise experience. Let's talk about controllers. MetaQuest 3 controllers come with true touch haptics. This enables a deeper sense of immersion, allowing developers to tap into people's natural sense of touch. We are introducing a slate of a state-of-the-art suite of haptics tools, MetaHaptic Studio and MetaHaptics SDK, to quickly and easily create audition, and implement high-quality HD haptics 
into your existing audio FX. But here's the best part. Everything you integrate with Haptics SDK is backwards and forwards compatible with Quest devices and controllers. At Meta, we believe that high fidelity digital representations of people and their physical movements can bring a deep sense of connection. And with Movement SDK, you can achieve all that. Our inside out body tracking technology uses sensors in the headset to track upper body movements accurately, making it really great for fitness, games, and social apps. Our new AI-based generative legs extends and simulates full body motion for a much more realistic presence. So how do we do it? We use machine learning models that are trained on large data sets of people doing real actions, like walking, running, jumping, playing ping pong. You get it. All this provides natural movements where the body keeps the center of gravity and limbs move, you know, like your real body moves. I'm really excited to see what our developers do with Movement SDK in all their apps. Now, we've talked about a lot of SDKs, but let's talk about developer tools. We want to help you push the boundaries of creativity while also making it easier and to be able to scale your applications. That's why we are investing heavily in building platform tools to make it simpler and faster for you to go from setup to build and to test. Just to quickly highlight some of these developer tools that we've been working on. Today, we are announcing Building Blocks for Unity, an easy way to start and combine multiple of our SDKs into your existing working project. With building blocks, it's really as simple as a drag and drop, drag and drop exercise in your editor, and you're good to go. Meta XR Simulator is our new tool for simulating Meta XR devices for faster development. With Meta XR Sim, you can simulate Meta XR devices at the API level to easily test and improve the mechanics, design, and the overall experience of your apps, all without putting on your headset. Yeah. Our Unity project setup tool takes your setup time from hours to mere minutes in just a few clicks. MQDH, or MetaQuest Developer Hub, is our tool for developers to build and iterate on their apps. We continue to make a lot of improvements to MQDH. Now you can easily invite your playtesters and enable them to capture and share feedback. Now, if you're already building for MR, we have just a few more updates for you. In partnership with Unity, we recently announced AR Foundation support for our Quest devices. Now, what does that mean for you? With AR Foundation, you build your MR applications once and release them on any ecosystem of your choice, not just Metas. And we are simultaneously building and shipping many of our features on both Unity and Unreal. Your ecosystem, your engine, your choice. All the tools, all the tools and updates that I just shared are great steps. But we also know there is so much that needs to be done. We are really committed to making MetaQuest development easier and faster to help accelerate developer innovation. Now, we have curated 
two days of a ton of developer-focused breakout sessions and workshops on a variety of relevant topics. I encourage you all to attend these workshops and developer sessions. And when you do, please talk to us. Your feedback is what will help us continue to innovate and ultimately make you all successful on the platform. Now, a little while back, I talked about how we are weaving AI to make significant improvements to mixed reality, hand tracking, movement, and more. But that's not all that Meta is doing on AI. So to talk more about how Meta is thinking about Gen AI for developers, please welcome Chaya. From developing MetaQuest 3 to generative AI, we've been a bit busy at Meta. Why? Because we're laser focused on building world-class tools and technologies built with developers in mind. Because we know that when our developers have accessible, easy to use tools for creation, the sky is the limit. We're weaving generative AI into nearly everything we do. And our vision, as you heard from Mark, Ahmed and Angela, is to create a platform that anyone can build on. Powered by learnings from our deep research and open models, broadly accessible to everyone, and integrated into our apps and services. At Meta, we believe in an open approach, and that it's the right one for development of today's AI. Especially those in the generative space, where the technology is rapidly advancing. By making AI models openly available, they can benefit everyone. Opening access isn't new at Meta. We have a long history of sharing open projects like PyTorch, React Native, GraphQL, Segment Anything, FairSec, and more to empower the community. We are especially excited about how this open approach can support developers like you. In July, we had the opportunity to share Llama 2 with the world, unlocking pre-trained and fine-tuned models of varying sizes. And we did this with the support of a broad and diverse set of companies and people across tech, academia, and policy who believe in our open approach to today's AI. One of the biggest criticisms of generative AI is that the technology will only be owned by the largest corporations given the really high cost to build it. And that's why we're democratizing the process, enabling all developers like you, from in individual developers to large companies, to access these models and really get access to the best models available. We've been thrilled to hear the varying ways teams around the world are already applying the tech to their own work. One, you can come back tomorrow and you can learn firsthand from Geo and Shopify on how they're bringing Llama to enterprises. Researchers at UC Berkeley, my alma mater, go Bears, um, a re built a research chatbot called Koala, which is fine-tuned on Llama 13b to study the performance of lower parameter models against closed source competitors. And what they found was that the research actually suggests that models that are small enough to run locally on your own machines can be just as performant as larger models with careful fine tuning. We're already seeing developers develop these tools. In fact, there's an entire subreddit with over 50,000 members dedicated to deploying Llama locally. Some of our developers are building role playing games. I'm really excited to try those out personally. These are great examples of the excitement building in the community around these open source tools. And in August, we're adding to the Llama family with the introduction of Code Llama. Since releasing Code Llama just one month ago on GitHub, we saw over 9,000 stars of people favoriting it. Over on Hugging Face, there's been over 100,000 downloads, and we've seen the community growing and improving our model with their own fine-tuned versions. In fact, we heard from Snowflake that fine-tuning improves the performance of Meta's Code Llama on SQL code generation. It's pretty cool. Now I want to share a little insight into what we envision for these models, especially for AR, VR developers like you. 
I want to share some bold ideas with images created with the EMU model that you just heard about from Mark. With Llama 2, we want businesses and developers to be able to fine-tune the pre-trained Llama 2 model for diverse cases. For instance, a digital artist could fine-tune Llama 2 to be a personalized AI that would enhance a VR art exhibit, giving every attendee a unique tour. The beauty of Llama 2 is that it's flexible and can easily run on your local infrastructure, making your imagination the limit of its utility. And imagine if you wanted to develop your own customer support agent, and you wanted that agent to represent you and your brand and its values. You could leverage Llama 2 Chat with a system prompt that teaches the model about your brand and its values, and you can quickly create a unique experience for your customers. For Llama 2 Chat, we really focused on safety alongside flexibility, so that it could be used for a wide variety of chat use cases and specialized through these system prompts. And I mentioned that we really envision businesses fine-tuning Llama 2 for these types of specific use cases, and that's exactly what we did for Code Llama. By leveraging both Code Llama and Llama 2 together, you could actually build a virtual storefront with Code Llama and Llama 2 Chat, and Llama 2 Chat could actually staff that storefront for you. It's pretty awesome. Across all of our investments in the Llama family, our goal was to create models that are flexible. They can adapt to your infrastructure, security, and your privacy needs, and they also have significant investments in safety. We really hope that these models will save you time and money and allow you to focus on making your most creative ideas become a reality and really building those ideas for your customers. Another way that developers are, supporting, um, are being supported by Llama 2 is our investments in safety and responsibility. And this is really important for me because this is my role here at Meta. Um, I focus on safety and responsibility. And our goal with these investments is to really ensure that you can build both safe and helpful experiences. Building responsibly is a major priority at Meta, and we believe that an open approach promotes transparency and access. We know that while AI has brought huge advances to society, it also may come with risks. And we invested significant engineering effort into fine-tuning the model with learnings from more than 1,000 hours of red teaming and annotation efforts. And we really worked to ensure that we balance safety of the model with model performance. One of the exciting parts of open sourcing our models is actually that developers like you can contribute to their safety and um, can contribute to the use of these models in responsible ways. For instance, developers can continue to fine-tune and report on safe behavior of these models, and as a community, we can actually leverage that feedback and make them safer. We're really looking forward to seeing how developers continue to build out the safety and integrity of these tools and really help to spur innovation and um, make these future releases under the Llama brand better. Okay, let's recap. We believe that large language models and creator tools can impact people's lives. And that's why we are putting these tools directly into your hands so that you can innovate, you can build responsibly, and contribute to the community of developers just like you. We hope that these tools will augment your ability to build rather than replace it. And later today and tomorrow, we're actually going to be sharing more content with you so that you can learn more about the Llama ecosystem. So be sure to check those out. We're so excited to support you in building the future. And um, we really are excited about the future of the metaverse and beyond. But for now, to share some of the incredible work this community has already been doing, please welcome Kimberly. Hello, developers! How's everybody doing? Now, come on, gimme, 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 gimme! All right! I get it, I get it, I get it. We've covered a lot in the past half an hour. Everything from our robust and growing MetaQuest ecosystem to the product updates we made based directly on your feedback to our big bit bets in generative AI. And look, while we're hoping all the cool stuff that's coming your way is going to make your lives and your jobs a little bit easier going forward, 
It's now time we turn the spotlight on you, our developer community. You have been driving incredible innovation and growth on our platform. We're seeing wins for developers across a broad range of app categories, genres, and studio sizes, from small one-person efforts in work-from-home offices to large 100-person teams, from indies exploring new mechanics in VR, to deeply experienced teams building the very foundations of mixed reality. And as with any growing ecosystem, those wins can take a different shape depending on just what the title and the developer has to offer. Now, earlier this year, we introduced Oculus Publishing, one of the largest publishers of VR and MR content in the world. Developer success is our brightest North Star. And it doesn't do the world any good if a developer releases a single title, explodes into digital fairy dust, and vanishes from our ecosystem. We work to support our developers to bring their best work to the store through a variety of methods and opportunities. Now, over the past three years, this line of thinking has translated into repeat successes for many developers on our platform. As an example, Shell Games continues to be one of our top developers with experience in creating both entertainment and educational titles. They're responsible for not only bringing hits like Among Us into VR, but stepping up to deliver top quality education titles like Kirksgesagt as part of their core commitment to make education in VR as engaging as it is retentive. And they've just cemented their success with one of the first broadly recognizable multi-title puzzle series in VR with I Expect You to Die 3, Cog in the Machine. Now our next repeat success story, Polyarch, is taking the rich and complex world and characters that they developed for the Moss franchise, and they're taking it in a whole new direction landing one of the first 1v1 MOBA-styled multiplayer VR titles with Glassbreakers, Champions of Moss. And CoatSync took their early VR success to a whole new level, going from a best-in-class third-party developer to a publisher under the name Thunderful. Alongside developing their own content, like their freshly launched VR darling Islanders, They've begun supporting and investing in star teams like Clockstone, developers of LEGO Brick Tales, to bring an even broader range of experiences to the platform. Now, on top of that, they're opening up their MR support to bring out a larger catalog of business. So for those of you who are already developing with us, you've seen our platform evolve firsthand. You've witnessed the addition of new hardware, new APIs that drive an enhanced sense of presence, software updates that give you better battery life, the launch of App Lab, and all new experiments in monetization. Since the launch of the original MetaQuest, Oculus Publishing, Oculus Studios, and Horizon Worlds have been helping developers and creators drive growth and push the boundaries of what our VR technology can deliver. And now that we've opened the doors to best-in-class MR, we are seeing developers embrace this unique modality of gameplay. But the magic of this new way to play is bringing some of our earliest developers back to the platform with some fresh ideas. High Voltage Software built the original Dragon Front for the Rift back when VR was still laying the foundations of what it could do for our players. And after spending some quality time on their flat screen catalog, the potential of MR has brought them back to our platform. It's fitting that one of our early true believers is working with Oculus Studios to bring a fully rebooted version of their early VR critical darling back to platform as Dragon Front Rising to help set the bar for mixed reality gaming as we kick off this new way to play. Bam is a never-seen-before MR title on the way from the developers of one of our early hits, Space Pirate Trainer. iIllusions took the idea of multiplayer tabletop gaming 
and bumped it into six degrees of freedom, taking the best of video game art and brawler mechanics and mashing it up with intuitive controls and pass-through to take over your coffee table. And Breach VR brought the puzzle gem Kartoffel to our platform back in 2022, and they've been continuing to iterate against our new technology since then. Their path of exploration and discovery has given them room to expand into multiple projects on store and on Horizon Worlds. Now, at this point, I think it's an established fact that digital social is here to stay, whether you're on a flat screen or whether you're in six degrees of freedom. And as we move into a future where everyone is as connected as they want to be, developers are finding success building new ways to play together. Fully embodied social experiences run the gamut from the structured social experience you find in classic multiplayer games, all the way through to unrestricted social sandboxes where the players and users define their own reality through user-generated content. Another axiom is the developer behind the viral hit Gorilla Tag. Part of Gorilla Tag's success journey included the deliberate use of App Lab to find their community, figure out merchandising, and make a content plan. They built the team to reach those goals, to thrive on the MetaQuest store as one of the best examples of a fully embodied and highly social game. Another Axiom have built App Lab into their development schedule for their next project, and they fully believe in its use as a method of success before launch. Now, in a similar vein, prominent Japanese development powerhouse Thirdverse has launched their VR multiplayer hero shooter, X8, first on App Lab to build out their community and to dial in on exactly what their players want to see in a VR multiplayer hero shooter. Now, every developer knows that you always bring a little bit of yourself into the process. And on the Horizon Worlds front, while Aaron Sorrells would no longer be considered unemployed and is actually a six years sober recovering alcoholic, he retains the moniker unemployed alcoholic because it reminds us that our greatest successes often come from our most difficult challenges. When COVID-19 devastated the comedy, uh, devastated live comedy, he turned to the metaverse to find a new way to help people laugh. Now is the world creator of the Soapstone Comedy Club. He and his team operate the most liked world in Horizon Worlds and one of the most popular destinations in the metaverse. And Rec Room was formed in the early days of VR when headsets still required expensive computers and wires to run them. They optimized, pivoted, launched on every platform and console, finding clear product market fit with the MetaQuest 2 audience. And Rec Room activates their audience with engaging IP integrations and unique custom content, such as Make It to Midnight, that bring their players together to play. Now, Roblox's creators and users have been asking to bring one of the largest platforms in the world to the MetaQuest, and they've delivered with style. Launching a beta on App Lab with an eye towards empowering their community to build games and experiences with VR in mind from the get-go. With over 50,000 worlds now VR ready, their amazing engineering team has been leaning hard on getting everything polished up so they can launch on store today. <laughs> so, with the launch of the MetaQuest 3, this amazing development community finally has the tools to build a best-in-class MR experience, and the games we are seeing come to light through are giving new depth to some classic modes of play. Now, as a recovering game developer myself, the idea of building a stealth action game that fits inside your very own home is hugely compelling, if difficult to design for. Digital Load, the team responsible for Eastspire 2, has reimagined a series of missions that are designed to take advantage of everyone's unique living spaces 
and it gives a little bit of a different experience to every single player. And Soul Assembly, the team behind the hit Drop Dead Horror titles, are using mixed reality to bring the incredible zombies and monstrosities of the cabin into the real world, challenging the player to defend the ultimate home invasion. And last but not least, Hit Point is leveraging the power of MR to bring the cats from their hit mobile cat collecting, collecting game, Neko Atsume, into your very own home. Because cat watching in your digital backyard is one thing, but being able to pick them up and cuddle them in your own living room is worth the work to buy all those toys and cat treats. We are so grateful for this community of developers, building for social experiences, productivity, gaming, fitness, education, media, and more. If you're a developer of any stripe, and you're not yet exploring our platforms, you're missing out on a market that just keeps getting bigger. And we invite you all to join us on the epic journey of building tomorrow's reality today. And with that, I'll let the community have the last word. Enjoy a look at some outstanding work currently being done on MetaQuest, MetaSpark, and with Gen AI, as well as a first look at some more of the exciting titles coming soon. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of Connect. There is plenty more to come this afternoon for those of you on campus with us. Okay, so again, remember, hair and makeup takes a lot of time. We're running a little behind. So all of the times that we have have shifted 30 minutes back for this afternoon. So follow the signs for lunch. Make sure you're back in building 15 for the start of the developer breakout sessions. And you can see all of the sessions that will be going on in our agenda. So you can plan your afternoon over lunch and then be sure to check out some of the new technologies you've been hearing about all over campus. And then for those of you that have joined us virtually, there is still so much to do. 2.30 p.m. Pacific time is also when the first set of on video on demand sessions will drop, so you definitely want to check those out. Take in a session or two this afternoon, and then be sure to see us right back here virtually or in person tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific for more of Meta's newest innovations right back here again at Meta Connect 2023. Make some noise, because we've had a fun day, yes? Excellent. We'll see you in a little bit. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.